by the end of this tutorial, you should be able to create your own custom web browser and uh, navigate the internet all in your own app. Let's get started. Hello and welcome back to another Thunderbolt tip. My name is Donald and in this one we are going to be introducing the web viewer component and building a very simple web browser. So let's jump right into it by adding in the web viewer to our app like this. You'll see that it takes up the full size of the screen by that green uh, box around the outline there. And what we're going to do is underneath this screen then we're going to put in a little navigation bar, browser bar I suppose. So to start off we'll put in uh, using the layout, we'll go in, we'll put in a horizontal arrangement, and I'm going to set the width of this to be fill parent. So that means it takes up the full width of the screen. I'm going to have a button here, and that's going to go to my new page. So let's change the text to go, for example. And beside that, then I'm going to have my text box. So if you haven't uh, watched any of the videos on the text box component yet, make sure you have a look and familiarize yourself with how they work. But to get this up and running, I'm going to set the width to fill parent. And for my hint, so a good hint is to provide an example of the type of input that you expect your user to type in. So let's go for something like a web address like that. Let's say example.com like so. Now, our web viewer itself. Let's take a closer look at this. Uh, first time we're, having, we're looking at this one, we've got an option here to follow links. That's obviously whether or not you can click on a link and open it up. The height and width, as you saw by default, go uh, to automatic. They take up the full screen. And what we'll do is we'll set our homepage here to be uh, the Thunkable website, Thunkable, uh, like that, dot com. Uh, ignore SSL errors, prompt for permission, uh, use external browser. This would be if we wanted to bypass the web viewer itself and use uh, an external uh, browser. And use location then is whether or not we want the uh, the browser then to have access to our location. So that requires another permission then if you uh, if you were to enable it like this. So let's um, go straight into our uh, blocks here. Let's take a quick look at them. Um, so when we click on the button, when we click on the go button, what we want to do is open up a new web page. So we're going to go to web your one and we've got the option here to go to URL. So the user hopefully types in a nice um, URL into the text box like that. And when we click the button, okay, so when the user clicks on the button, the web viewer one goes to a new URL based on what the user has typed into the text box. So let's take a look at that in action in our live testing app. Over here now we've got the Thunkable website, that's our home um, page like that. We've got example.com down here at the very bottom. So let's type in, let's say HTTP colon forward slash Google dot com like this. When we click go, the web page appears. We've got to click the little OK button then to make the keyboard disappear. So, and then we've got this little zoom icon in here. That's pretty good for accessibility, but I'm finding it a little bit kind of annoying. So maybe we should put that into a settings page if you are building our own browser. So a few little things, um, now if I want to go to another page, I have to delete google.com and uh, type in the name of the next web page I want to go to, like this, and then click go, and again the screen is very squashed like this. So we want to kind of improve the, the UX of this a little bit. So let's go back here, let's make some small changes maybe to our designer. I'm going to get rid of the status bar. We can get rid of the title bar as well, I think, because that will um, give us more space on the screen to view the web page, the website with. And then what I'm going to do is in the web viewer component, I'm going to get rid of or uncheck this zoom display. So like I say, pretty handy for accessibility, but maybe you could put that in as a feature somewhere else on a settings page rather than having it enabled by default. Uh, so in our blocks then, what we want to do is when they click on that, we want to go to the URL. And then another thing we can do, I suppose, is that we can hide the keyboard. So that way we'll see the full web page or the web page will take up the full screen as soon as it loads. And another thing that I found a little bit annoying there when I was testing was that um, once we had clicked um, onto the text box, we had to delete the website that we used to be on 
and um, then type in the new website. So let's clear out the text box by setting the text box dot text property like this to be this empty string like so. Okay, so we haven't really changed uh, any of the code in our app yet, but we've got thunkable.com here. Let's open up uh, google.com then, like so. And we click go. Now it takes up the full web page as well, so that's nice. Google.co, it seems to have uh, figured it out there. Um, and then what we can do is uh, when we click onto it here, you can see the uh, old URL disappears. But we also, let's say we want to go to thunkable.com like this, uh, thunkable.com, like so. So when we click go, it'll just think about it for a while. We might get a little error message here eventually. So the problem that I'm trying to illustrate here is that unless we put in the protocol at the beginning, so you have to type in, even if you type in www, let's say like this, thunkable.com, we can wait and wait and wait, and we're still not going to find uh, any website like that. So we've got to put in HTTP uh, in front of it, or HTTPS. And as soon as you put that in, um, then it goes. So anybody who browsed the web in the 90s probably remembers what that was like. Uh, but most web browsers don't require you to put in the HTTP or www anymore. So let's uh, add that into our uh, app here. So this is the point here where we're going to the URL. This is where we want to check whether or not this um, text box text has the correct protocol out. So we're going to do this if then else. Okay. And our test is going to be to see whether or not the text contains um, either of those two protocols. So does that text have HTTP or HTTPS? Like so. Does it have HTTP like this or does it have HTTPS? So as you can probably guess, we've only got one socket in here, or as you can see, we've only got one socket in here, and we have two things that we want to test for. We've got to test if it has this one or if it has that one. And if you've been uh, studying your blocks, if you've been looking at the blocks, you'll know that there's actually one in here in logic called or. And that's exactly what this is intended for. We want to check if one thing or another thing is true, like this. Sometimes then when you're looking at uh, tutorials, you might see uh, the blocks lined up like this, and what, what we've got here is external and in, internal or inline inputs like that. So inline inputs, it's just going to kind of go off the edge of the screen here. Some people, just for kind of aesthetics, I think, might prefer the um, uh, external inputs. So if it does have one of the protocols, then we're fine. We'll just go to um, the URL that they type in. But more often than not, I suppose, that most people probably wouldn't type it in. And so what we'll do is join HTTP, like this, with the text box text, like so. Okay, so back in our screencast then, we've got thunkable.com there with the HTTP and everything typed into it. Let's go back to Google, like so. Let's type in google.com, uh, hit go, and now it loads immediately, like that. Uh, we can try out some other websites as well. What about Facebook? Dot com. Yeah, so that loads pretty quickly without any issue at all. So now what we've done here is we've set it up so that we don't need to um, type in all the characters every time we want to go to a website. The last couple of things maybe that we'll do is add in two little buttons for going forwards and backwards. So let's add in two buttons here, button two and button three, like that. And it's a good idea, once you have several components that are the same type, to start renaming them. So down here, we'll call this one button uh, go. The forward button can be button forward, like this. And the button three then will be btn um, back, like this. Uh, okay, so in terms then of the text that we see on the button, I'm going to change the width to be, I think, about 40 pixels. When I was testing it out, it worked pretty nice for me. I'm going to make the font a bit bigger. I'm going to make it bold as well. I'm going to make it bold. And then rather than having any words, they'll just use a little backwards arrow like that. 
We can do the same thing then on the forward button, bold text, slightly larger font, and a forwards arrow like this. And for button go, we might, we'll definitely make the font bold. And let's make the font size. It doesn't have to be quite so big, I don't think. Okay. So if we look at this here, again, oh, we have to change the width of um, our forward button. So our forward button should have a width of 40 pixels, just like this. Okay, so our design, our UI is nice now. We've got um, plenty of stuff for the user to interact with. And let's code up the events then for going forwards and backwards. So start off with a, the forward button. When it's clicked, if we can go forward, like this, that's the block we have here, then what we want to do is go forward. So you could, if you wanted, just put in this one here, but it, we won't necessarily always be able to go forward, which is why we might like to do a test. And you could have maybe a notifier to pop up and let the user know then that they had reached the end. Or what you could do maybe is set the enable property to uh, false or something like that. So maybe actually that's quite a nice one. So set the enabled property to be uh, false, like this. And then we can do the same thing, I suppose, for the back button. But obviously, rather than checking whether or not we can go forward, we're going to want to check whether or not we can go back using this one here. And rather than telling it to go forward, of course, when the back button is pressed, we're going to have to go back. Finally, make sure then that you're using the back enabled set to false then if we've run out of places to, to go. So this is uh, loaded again from scratch. Let's try google.com, google.com. Perfect, okay. Click on it again. Uh, yeah, that loads fine. Click on it again. Click on, let's go facebook.com. Okay, that's great. Now we can use the back button to go back to Google. We can go back to Thunkable, and now we can start going forward again through the other pages. When we run out of pages, when we get to back to facebook.com, uh, the forward button is uh, disabled like this, it's grayed out, and we're no longer able to uh, go forward through the, the list of URLs. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope that you've enjoyed learning how to build this a very basic web browser. It is by no means complete, so I'll have a link in the description to an open source project that we've got in the Thunkable community with much more resources. If you like this video, click on the thumbs up. If you want to see more videos all about Thunkable components, then click on the subscribe button. And if you have any questions, as I'm sure you'll have plenty of questions on this one, make sure that you click, uh, leave a question down in the comments section below. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.